So here's a quick video demonstrating how I would go about finding the uh, toxin gene for that strain of E. coli that causes uh, hamburger disease. That's uh, E. coli 0157 colon H7. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, let's um, uh, look at the Blackboard site, and you can see I've got a couple links here, and there's one to the worksheet as well. Um, we'll start with the Joint Genome Institute, which I've already opened up in another window to go quickly. And with your Google search, you would have figured out the pathogenic strain, the name of the strain, as well as the name of the toxin. So let's look for that gene in the pathogenic form of E. coli. And you would have found through your Google search it was Shiga toxin. And you can see I've searched for it already. Now we need to find out um, which organism to look for in it. We don't want to look through all organisms, but we'll scroll way down to Escherichia coli way down. Okay, and there we go. Uh, you can see it's alphabetically ordered, so 0157H7. There's lots of candidates we have here. If we wanted to get them all, I would just, uh, you know, hold my shift key down, click the first and the last, and this will select all of the E. coli that we'd be looking for, but I don't really want to do that. Uh, let's just look through the first one that's well characterized. That happened to be Sakai. You could play with different versions if you want to, but I want to keep it simple. So I'm going to look through Sakai for this Shiga toxin, and I hit go. And there we go after a brief moment. We have all of the ones we found in there. It looks like we've got uh, several gene objects here, and we're going to come back to that in a minute. But first I want to add these to my cart. So you select the ones you want, and it'll remember it throughout the... Sorry, that's my email. It'll remember it throughout the session. And then you are immediately sent to an analysis cart where you could look uh, at certain characteristics on this. You could uh, look at the gene neighborhoods, which you see I've already done. Um, so there we see it. Uh, there's our different candidate genes. We've selected them all. We're in the tools section. Now let's just look for the sequence of one of these. So we see there's E. coli, the pathogenic strain. It's got the Shiga toxin in it, uh, two versions of this. And uh, just for fun, actually, you know what? Let's look at the gene na neighborhood. There we go. Uh, click there. It'll take us to this um, part. And then you hit Show Neighborhoods. And it'll open up a visual. And you can see the genes have a flat end and a pointy end that tells us it's tr being transcribed from left to right in this case and from right to left in this case. And notice they're on different strands. All the same stranded genes are facing in the same direction. This fits, by the way, a lot of the things we noticed in class. Now the gene in particular are shown in, in red, and we have Shiga toxin subunit A and Shiga toxin subunit B. They're represented in two maps that are identical in this case uh, because they are identical. They just identified two different genes. Et voila, that's exactly the same gene right there. Uh, we also see this other version. This uh, We have the precursor one, and then we have the, the other uh, strain that it found a different location on there, although it looks basically the exact same. If we look at the orientation of these, these would be clusters of orthologous genes uh, showing us um, uh, you know, the same, same information uh, in both cases. So although they call it precursor gene here, uh, or wait, one of these says precursor, these are really the same uh, regions that we see in, in both of these cases. All right, so let's go back and take a look at um, the sequence of these. So we'll go back here, and uh, the, this has an amino acid sequence for the toxin A of 319. That makes sense, because the one we saw in the neighborhood map was longer, where we have one that was much shorter, about a third the length, uh, for subunit B. So for fun, let's just look at uh, the longer one. And I'll click on its name of the gene, and it pops it up, and we've got gene information, protein information, and some other things that we could look at. And we want to look at the um, nucleotide sequence. So here we see it, 960 base pairs. When we click on that, it will give me the gene sequence. What we want to do is blast this against the, um, the genome of just regular E. coli. So what we've done up to this point is we put in a toxin name, we searched through a pathogenic organism, we found that gene, and now I want to go back. So let's go over here, back to blast. And I want to do a nucleotide blast, because those are, amino, are, are nucleotides that I have. I'll paste that in. And then when you go down to the database, we want to search it through the nucleotide collection. And specifically, we don't want, only want to look at Escherichia coli.
and we want to look for it in a non-pathogenic strain. And in this case, I'm going to choose both K12s because I'm not sure which. They're probably the same. They have the same tax ID. And I want to look for ones that, you know, perhaps are not very similar. So we hit blast. We'll wait for a few iterations of the screen, and it will eventually show us whether or not we can find it in the non-pathogenic strain. And when it comes back, if we find a similar gene that is not a pathogen in E. coli, that tells us that it is a mutation of an existing gene. If we don't find it, and we did not, you can see right here, no sequence similarity right in this region, that tells us that it's not from uh, an existing gene in E. coli. Let's go back and do a positive control. Say, okay, well, we looked for it in E. coli and we didn't find it. There's our sequence there. Now, um, I get an error with this sometimes. Hopefully, you can not get an error here. Now, to do our positive control, we put in the sequence and we'll just want to put in um, the pathogenic strain of E. coli. And there it is. Put that in. Look for highly similar sequences because it should be in there. And there's our answer. Looks like we've got some really good uh, uh, hits. And we'll notice that we have all of the E. coli and we get some phage, which is interesting because sometimes these genes will move through a phage, so it could be a transduction event, and I saw that on some of your uh, answer sheets in class. And uh, if you look, you see very good alignments of these sequences. So this tells us that um, we do have a gene that's showing up in this organism. Now for the next part, if we're looking for um, some neighborhoods that, that match up, we could then search through other organisms where we might have found it. And we just looked through the pathogenic strain, we might want to instead change it to uh, Shigella, for example, which is where the uh, term uh, uh, Shiga toxin came from. And there we go, we take a look, and we've got pretty good similarity here. And you can see that we're finding an awful lot of this toxin in Shigella. Um, pretty close homology, and in fact, there I think there's a pretty good um, connection between these uh, two organisms. So you can go back and look at the network neighborhoods in your other um, examples. So if we went back here and decided to add to our cart, we'll do a gene search. Look up Shigella dysentery. Yeah, looks like we got both of them. We show up uh, both in the dis the one one species. We got A and B versions. That's interesting. We'll add those to the cart. And when it comes back, we can compare these with uh, let's say. Let's just look at the A toxins together. Should we A, 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 and find the gene neighborhoods. And there we go.